before I tell you my name, let me tell you the story behind it. I was born in the Shoshone tribe. My father was the chief. The day I was born, a big eagle flew by near my mom. She had thought the eagle would hurt her, but it didn't. The people of the tribe saw it as an omen of me being special and gave me a name that meant bird woman. But in my tribe, I was called Sacagawea. Since I was born a little before I was meant to, the entire tribe was pretty disappointed seeing how small and fragile I was. Your child, she is destined to reach great heights, go places, be invincible. You really think so? But she is small and weak. Don't underestimate her, for when she is older, she will move mountains. Well, she was right. I don't know about moving mountains, but as I grew up, I wasn't weak and fragile anymore. Actually, I was kind of a wild child. I would spend hours playing in the forest, riding horses, and just exploring the outdoors. I was fearless and brave, and I knew one day I'd make my tribe proud of me. But there was one tiny problem. I was afraid of heights. All my friends would be climbing trees and rocks, and it would always scare me. I didn't really mind. I knew I could do so many other things. But a girl, Redfeather, who was from another tribe, always made it a point to tease me about it. I knew why. It was because she had a big fat crush on my best friend, Miko, and hated that he cared so much for me. What kind of bird woman are you if you can't even climb a tree? Look, Miko, I can climb so high. So what? Sakajuia can ride a horse, backwards. She can catch a fish with just her hands, and she's not a show-off like you, Redfeather. Ugh, oh, what do you even see in her? He just told you. Strength, ability, class. Now shoo off before I whoop your butt. You wouldn't dare. Oh, but I dared. In seconds, Redfeather and I were tangled like two wrestlers, but I instantly let her go when I saw my dad coming. He had told me so many times not to argue with Redfeather. Her tribe was always looking to get into a fight with ours. Once I was home, I got the lecture of a lifetime. And even though I tried to tell dad how that witch had started it, he just wouldn't listen. Frustrated, I left the tent and sat near the river. Angry at dad? No, not at all. I'm angry at myself for not being brave enough to climb a tree. If I could, I would have proved, hey, hey, you don't need to prove anything to anyone. Got it? And who said you aren't brave? My love, you are the bravest girl I know. You can definitely do anything you set your mind to. Here, it's time for you to have this. Mom, why are you giving this to me? It's the most precious thing you have. No, you are my most precious thing. Saying that, she hugged me tight. After that day, I tried to steer clear of Redfeather. The girl was nothing but trouble. But one day, as Miko and I were hanging out near the big waterfall, the witch came and yanked my necklace. Give it back, now. Redfeather, I swear I'll... But before I could even finish my sentence, the witch gave me a smirk and dropped Mom's necklace down into the waterfall. I felt my blood run cold, and even though I was scared of heights, I did the unthinkable. I jumped. I felt like I was flying, and in the water, I managed to reach the necklace. When I got back up, Redfeather, Miko, and everyone else were in awe. Redfeather's dad came and made her apologize to me. From that day forward, I was known as the brave bird woman who could do anything. I had made my mark, and I was so proud of myself. A few years later, my dad announced Miko in my wedding, and I couldn't be happier. Our wedding was going to be the biggest event in the tribe, and everyone was preparing for it. Even Redfeather, who had been surprisingly friendly since the necklace incident, was helping out with the decorations. One night, Redfeather asked me to meet her by the waterfall. I was a little hesitant, but I thought maybe she wanted to apologize for her past behavior. I was wrong. As I approached the waterfall, I saw several men standing in the shadows. Redfeather stepped out of the darkness and smiled at me. What? What's happening? Who are these people? I can't let you marry Miko. Take her away. Before I could say anything else, the men dragged me away and everything went dark. When I finally opened my eyes, I was in a carriage. Where am I? Where are you taking me? I am the daughter of the Shoshone chief. When my dad finds out about you, he'll have you punished. And who's gonna tell him, princess? You are far away from home. <laughs> You'll never get back home. Hearing his words made my heart sink. 
and I clutched onto mom's necklace. It was the only thing I had from home. We had been on the road for seven days when one night I heard noises. There were so many people fighting. The caravan was being attacked. I was so scared. I had no idea what was happening. But then I heard a voice that spoke in a different language. It was a French man. He and his soldiers had attacked the caravan and freed me. They kept talking, but I didn't understand a word. And when I spoke, they didn't understand my language either. But even with the language barrier, I knew they meant well. I didn't know how to get back home. So one of the soldiers found a nice family who adopted me and taught me their language. I was so thankful to them and all the help they gave me. Years passed and I missed home terribly. Unfortunately, we had traveled too far in an unknown direction, so I didn't know my way back. When I turned 18, I got married to a French man, and just when I had my son, my husband left me. I was disappointed. As a little girl, I had thought I would go places, have a life filled with adventure, make my tribe proud, but everything had gone so wrong. But things changed when one day, two men, Lewis and Clark, came to my town. They had heard about me and wanted to know if I could help them find a new route to the Pacific Ocean. Sacagawea, we heard you used to be from the Shoshone tribe. We need your help to find a new route to the Pacific Ocean. I'm not sure I can help you. I have been away from my home for many years. You don't need to worry. We have maps and guides to help you. We just need your help to navigate the terrain and communicate with the locals. That sounds like a lot of work. Why should I take up the offer? Because we're headed west. This might be your chance to get home. What? All right, I'll do it. I was so excited to be joining the expedition in April of 1805, with my newborn son tied to my back on a sling, ready to set off on the adventure of a lifetime. As we made our way along the river, I helped out in any way I could. I showed the men how to find edible roots and plants, and how to identify which ones were not safe to eat. Everyone was amazed at how much I knew, and some even joked about me being the team's official hunter. It was everything my mom had taught me. We had been traveling for months, and Lewis and Clark were always friendly to me. I realized how important the mission was for them. One day as we were crossing a river, our boat capsized. Oh my God, our documents and supplies. All our hard work will be gone. Quickly, I jumped into action and was able to save most of the supplies and important documents. Sacagawea, that was amazing. Oh, thank you so much for saving these. I owe you for life. It's no big deal. I'm here to help, aren't I? That you are. But your bravery needs a reward. I had thought they'd give me some coins as a reward, but when they named the river after me, I was speechless. Wow, I am so honored. Just promise us you're gonna stick around with us till the end because I know for sure we can't finish this journey without you. <laughs> I promise, I will. Our journey continued for months, and when it was summer, we stepped into a land that was familiar. I ran into the forest, and when I saw the waterfall at the end, I felt like my heart stopped. I was home. It was the land of the Shoshones. I was ecstatic. When I walked into the chief's teepee with Lewis and Clark, I was stunned to see the new chief. It was Miko. Sakajuia, is it really you? Yes, it's me. But how is this possible? We thought you were lost forever. I was taken away by some men and adopted by a nice family. Miko was filled with joy and tears of happiness rolled down his face. He then asked Lewis and Clark to give us some alone time. He called my mom and dad and the moment they saw me, they hugged me tight. Sakajuia, I can't believe my eyes. I am so happy to see you here. Me too. I missed my family and my tribe so much. We never knew what happened to you. We searched for you for months and months. It was then the hatred I had for Redfeather came back, and I told Miko, Mom, and Dad everything. Miko had his guards bring in Redfeather from her tribe along with her father. The moment Redfeather saw me, her face went pale and she fell on her knees in front of me. You witch! I knew you were jealous of me, but how could you stoop so low? Sakajuia, I am so sorry for all the wrong I have done to you. I am sorry. Please forgive me. I wanted to tell her no. And how could she even ask for me to forgive her? But just then, Miko declared that Redfeather would be kicked out of her tribe 
or else the peace pact between our tribe and hers would be broken. To my surprise, Redfeather's father didn't hesitate a bit and agreed. I apologize for what my daughter did to you. I'm ashamed of her. It was her doing. You don't have to apologize for her. Once Redfeather left, Miko and my parents asked me to stay in the tribe, but I just couldn't. I had made a promise to Lewis and Clark. While my parents agreed to let me go, Miko was making it hard. You just came back. You can't leave now. Please, Sakajuia, stay. I will, Miko. I give you my word. Once the journey is finished, I'll come back here, to the tribe, to you. Reluctantly, Miko let me go, and I accompanied Lewis and Clark on the rest of their journey. We continued on our travels, but one day, something horrible happened. As we were passing through a thick forest, an arrow hit a tree just inches from Lewis. I was so scared and desperately wanted to help my group. I quickly grabbed my bow and arrow and ran towards the attackers. I was determined to protect Lewis and Clark, and I started shooting arrows at the attackers. One of the attackers stopped, and seeing a native woman protecting the European men, he called off the attack. You. You are. With them? Yes, I am. They come in peace. Please, let us pass. Everything has a price. Give us something. Perhaps the necklace around your neck. Will you let us pass if I give it to you? Yes. With a heavy heart, I took off my mom's necklace and handed it to the man, and the attackers left, and I ran to Lewis and Clark. I was so relieved that no one got seriously hurt. Sakajuia, why did you give your necklace? I know what it means to you. It was precious to you. For me, my friends are more precious. Your safety means everything to me. I just did what I had to do. No, you did more than that. You saved us all. I felt so proud of myself. Finally, I had done something that my parents and the tribe could be proud of. We continued our journey and finally made it. After months of traveling, here I was, standing by the Pacific Ocean. I felt like I was in a dream. The sound of the waves crashing against the shore, the smell of the salt in the air, and the feeling of sand between my toes. It was breathtaking. I couldn't believe I was here. I had been on this journey for so long, and now I was standing at the edge of the world. I realized in that moment how much I had grown. I had gone from a scared little girl who was afraid of heights to a brave and fearless woman who had gone on an amazing journey. We stayed for a month, and when it was time to return, Lewis and Clark asked me to come with them on another expedition. I really wanted to because I loved adventure, but I had other plans. When I returned home, the first thing I asked was where Miko was, and my parents told me that every morning he sat by the waterfall. So I snuck up to him and hugged him, and we both ended up in the water. Oh my god, you, you came. I promised, remember? Saying that, I kissed him, and it felt so right, like I was finally where I belong, finally home. Today, there are more statues in the United States dedicated to me than any other American woman. I'm remembered now as a hero and as a symbol of courage, strength, and peace for safely guiding the expedition to the Pacific Ocean. My story continues to inspire and remind people that no matter who you are or where you come from, you can always make a difference.